So boys, 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 welcome back. Today, gonna be a little bit of fun. We got ourselves a week cup match against PSV, and then we got our Europa League draw. The draw we got against the team, let's be honest, they weren't great, but look, it takes us on to the next stage. We're in a round of 16. After this, we go into the quarterfinals. Like I said, we'll go over and we'll have a wee look at all the results, and we'll see who's actually still left in the competition. Maybe this could be our chance that a wee Europa League win. So the last results are pretty much I showed you is I left you off at Wellnack, I think. The Dutch Cup. It was after the Dutch Cup third round. So then we played Heracles. We beat them 5-2. Marcus Leonardo got himself a hat trick. And then Avila scored. Then we played PSV at our home arena. Beat them 3-0. A fucking fantastic result. Like I said, PSV are a very, very good team in this. I think we. I think it's fair to say we've probably got the best team in the league now. Fan order at the start of the game have a really I would say fan order squad's probably better than Ajax's at the start of the game. But we have built ourselves a fucking fantastic team. So like I said, we went and beat them 3-0. We had Ranch score, we had Leonardo score, and we had Carlos Burgess score. Then we went and played Heron Veen, beat them 3-1. Musarari got two, and Marcus Leonardo got one. And Mansverk was hitting our penalties. He missed. And then Wrench hit a penalty, and then he missed. So this could have been 5 1 if we wouldn't have missed two penalties. <laughs> then we went and played uh, Nijmegen, beat them 6 0. Once again, we're starting to score a lot of goals and not really conceding. Look, in this league, like I said in the previous episode, PSV, Fanord, and probably like Utrecht and FC20 are probably the teams that we're kind of up against. It's mostly going to be like us and Fanord. I think it's fair to say we probably have the best squads. But the league, I expect to win the vast majority of these games. But like I said, when we start getting into the Champions League, that's when we're going to be playing the big boys. And that's where we're going to see how good our team is. But until then, all we can do is just keep winning. So then we went and played AZ, we beat them 4-2. We had um, Vanderson score, we had Miss Rari score, and Borges scored, and then they scored an OG. So that leads us to today's game where we play PSV in the Dutch Cup in the quarterfinals. We obviously win this takes us to the semis so the team that we got in europa league is sir verte I, i'm not gonna lie i don't even know who they are they're in the swiss league i have never heard of this team ever but let's have a wee look and see who's still in the round of 16 so like i said look straight away liverpool you've got liverpool lazio newcastle by Bayer, fucking Bayern, Bayern. hold on i have to see who they played who was their Champions League group? Milan, Arsenal. Okay, that, that's a reasonably hard group between fucking Milan, Arsenal, and Bayern. That's a hard one. They lost by a good amount. They lost three games. They only won two. But Bayern Munich's team, I would expect them to go a lot further than that. But like I said, this is where we find out. Look, Brighton's there. Villarreal's are West Ham's are Rennes. Rennes is the guy that's coached by... Is it Rennes? No, no, it's, it's, it's Rome's, isn't it? But anyway... I would say we got the easiest draw there, boys. I would say we probably got the easiest draw. Like I said, Liverpool, Lazio, Newcastle, fucking PSV, Bayern, Brighton, Villarreal, West Ham. There's a lot of really, really good teams in here. Honestly, I would like to try and avoid most of the really, really good teams until like the semis. If we get past here, when you get into the quarters, it's probably going to take out all the dead boards. So when you get into the quarterfinals, it's, we're going to be up against a good team. If we can avoid Liverpool and Bayern, I would say we, we could give the rest of those other teams a really, really good match. Newcastle's got a good team. Villarreal's got a decent team too. Those would be hard games. But the Bayern and Liverpool games is where their fucking squads are way better than ours. I would like to try and avoid them until like the semis or the final would be nice. But I would say Severity, we, we got lucky. We busy got probably the easiest draw out of that. Then with regards to the team, look, the team is starting to look really, really good. Um, Today, uh, Sotulo is currently out. So I'm going to push Hato or Hato back in the libero, and then Ranch is going to move into the middle of the park. I've been playing Ranch a wee bit at right, uh, right wing, complete wing back when Van Vandersen was out injured, so basically I pushed him in there. So today is going to be Gorter, Hato, uh, Badeshubu, I can never pronounce his fucking name, Lacroix, Barco is currently playing because Sosa is not currently fit, and then Ranch, Vandersen, uh, Rooney Badji, Mishrari, Kanate, and Marcus Leonardo. So here's the thing, because previously we had no staff, and people like where is he at uh, Borges I could kind of guess he was going to be a good player but he was rated at like a five star player and I was like I don't think he's going to hit five star now that we have very very good staff he's now rated at a three star which is pretty close to where he is 
maybe hit four star, but you would need to play him all the time. So he's going to be one of those ones I might... You probably end up being a squad player or probably move on at some point, which I don't really, really want to do. I want to give him a couple of seasons and kind of see how he gets on. But he was a five star potential. I was kind of excited about that. I was like, oh, are we five star? He's only 19. He's exciting. But at the end of the day, look, he was already here when we got here. We paid 12 million for him, which is kind of wild. If he's good, keep him in the team. He'll be a squad player. I can't see him getting on in front of Rooney Badgie. I think Rooney Badgie's just going to be like, Rooney Badgie's a wee bit better all rounded and he's a year young. look at how look at how much he's worth already 48 to 72 million this is the thing if players are good their valuation goes up borges has played 22 games already 14 goals five assists and he's still only valued at 12 and a half to 14 million which just tells you everything you need to know like konate we bought him for what 28 million he's now valued at 68 to 80 million <laughs> so like i said you can tell when a player is going to be good because their valuation goes up very very fast when you bring him into a good team same with marcus leonardo currently worth 82 to 111 million now and we bought him for 20 miss rari let's see how much he's worth now 18 to 23 so he may be good he may not be good but one of the things is he was already here he came through UC system so it costs us absolutely nothing if he's good enough he'll play if not, once again, be a squad player. He's also Dutch, which helps with registration. He also came through the Youth Academy, so that also helps with registration as well. Wrench came through. Did Hato come through? I think he did, didn't he? Yeah, so Hato came through. I think Wrench came through. Yeah, Wrench has been there for a while. If you look at if you look at the players they've sold over the over the years, they, they had some squad. They had some squad. But let's be honest, Ajax, Ajax and Dortmund are very very good for pumping out really really good kids like they really are they just they have just amazing new systems they make all these fantastic kids then they sell them on <laughs> and just make an absolute fortune while it is a fantastic system to just make your club extremely stable you're also making your team weaker which is the thing that i don't like but it's also very very hard to keep players in the dutch league like like i said when um stefan burgess if, it's not even, that's not even much call them it's the guy we sold to real madrid like when, when that happens i'm not going to be able to keep players like that because like when real madrid man city man united liverpool juventus big teams that got in really good leagues come calling you can't really overly stop them the only thing i do want to do down the line is with canate's contract i want to get this above i want to get this to like 80 or 90 million so probably i don't know at the end of the season Probably at the end of the season, I'll try and offer him an R contract and I'll try and get that release clause up because I think he's going to be worth a lot of money. I would rather keep him because I think he's going to be fantastic. But if a big team comes in, I can't really overly stop him because like I said, once again, we're in the Dutch league and when the big boys start calling, you have to say it. But this is the team for today. Like I said, we're going to play the PSV game and then we're going to play the first leg of the round of 16 and see how we got like that that team from the swiss league i expect us to spank them i really really do but it is football manager and sometimes you just never know so let's jump over first things first we'll play psv in the cup and i'll also she is she is she is the league we are currently top by what seven points once again like i said played 23 121 drew two haven't lost any games 66 goal difference and to be fair Feyenoord have pulled it back as we were like 20 odd goals ahead they have won a lot of games by a lot of goal difference so they're starting to catch up like I said it's going to be between us and Feyenoord to see who's going to be the best team in Holland like it really really is like if you look at Feyenoord's team like they have good players like they have Shaquille Van Persie he's a wonder kid gonna be very very good they also have Il Gutriga very very good he will be one of the very very nice to have in defensive midfielder he's Dutch He's also only 23 years old. Very, very good player. They have a good team. And like I said, it's, it's going to be between us. Once we get our squad going, like Kanate, Kanate has played one game for us. Actually, is it one game or two games? I think he's only played maybe two games for us. Yeah, he's played three. He hasn't scored, but he hasn't been fully fit. So I don't really expect him to just hit the ground run and score fucking hat tricks all the time. But we're doing well in the league. Like I said, we have Marcus Leonardo and Van Bommen as top goal scorers. Van Bommen. The worst part is he hasn't played <laughs> and he's still the third top goal scorer so we've two people in there van bommen is a half average rating vanderson and wrench wrench was playing while vanderson was basically injured and ended up getting himself a ton of assists then player of the matches we have vanderson and marcus leonardo so we're like we're getting in there we're in the stats and like i said 
Ajax have never really, like, they've been a good team, and they've had these wee stints where they win, like, three or four years in a row. PSV had a wee stint, then Ajax had a wee stint, then PSV had a wee stint, and then Ajax had a wee stint, and we've never, it's, it's never been, like, a Bayern Munich in the German League, where there's just, like, like where the fuck is Bayern? Let's go to this. Like, they've never really had, like, this type, like, you look at this shit. Like, this is ridiculous. The last team to win was Dortmund in 2011-2012 season. And since then, it's just been Bayern Munich. But like I said, Ajax have never had that reign of terror type thing. And that's what I want us to do. I want us to win the fucking league every year. I think with our team and the players that we can basically bring in and basically build a really, really good team with, we should... Is Union Berlin top of the German league? What? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what what is going on here is it, dude Dortmund are third Bayer are fifth Wolfsburg are sixth Wolfsburg is a team I would love to do again as well I thought it was a very very fun team Dortmund are third what the fuck Union Berlin I'm getting sidetracked but like I said th that's what my plan is is basically to have like a reign of terror with Ajax and then probably build us into like a really really strong like hard hitting Champions League team I want us to basically be known to be a really really competitive team in the Champions League that's where I want to get us to that's where we will get to it's just going to take a few years because like we said we have young players but we need them to sort of they're here and we need them up here so boys here we go look we just beat PSV 3-0 in the league this is a game at, once again I, I would like us to win look you can't always guarantee against good teams that you're just always going to win but this is, I want a good performance and like I said you also have to remember Hato is our captain and he's only, what, like 17 or 18 years old, which is absolutely wild. Like, the fact that he's captain at such a young age shows you, like, the, how our oldest player on our first team is 26. 26 years old. Dude, did you just see that jump? There's no... He wasn't offside, ref. Stop that. You see the jump? Since when is Marcus Leonardo so good in the air? That's 100% a goal. 100% a goal. There's no way he was offside. Look at this vertical leap. Is this Dr. Disrespect? <laughs> Marcus Leonardo is only like 5'9", bro. Look at this header. Look how high he is above everybody else. Hold on, I skip this. How good is Marcus Leonardo's heading? 12! 11 jump and reach. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. He's not 5'9". He's 5'10". He doesn't need a good heading. Their center backs must be absolutely terrible. Does he have a clause? He doesn't have a clause. If, if they ever come in for him... I'm one at least 80 to 90 to 100 million. 80 to 100 million, I'm one for Marcus Leonardo. 23 goals in 22 games, two assists, and a 7.49 rating for the season. Look, if big teams want to want to bam, show me that money. I want at least 80 mil. I want 80 mil. If he's worth 82 million, I want at least 80 mil. It's also nice to have a bunch of really, really good like kids. Like Barco, the fact that we got Barco for like, I forgot whenever we, for the United save, I couldn't remember how much money we got him for. Look, I know we had bar. This is one thing I always try and do. See, when you're trying to do rebuilds, one, you try and play with different players because if you just buy, keep buying the same players over and over and over and over again, it gets kind of boring. It also gets kind of boring for people to watch. But that's the thing. When you play with different... Man United have massive pool. They're in the Premiership. It's Man United. Everybody knows who they are. So you can pretty much get most pretty good players. Hold on. Marcus, come on, boy did so well until the finish um but like man united have a massive pool but then you go to like smaller teams i would say ajax isn't a small team they have a lot of pool they're just not playing great at the minute but like you can't attract the same type of players and i think that's good when you go all around the world obviously you've got restrictions spain you can only have like three non-eu players in the dutch league you can only register three different players so like um rudy Baji and barco i couldn't register the europa league because we all read it. Look, I needed um, Konate in the team. I needed... God, who was it? There was three players. Uh, Badashibu. And we had already registered one player. So I needed those two players. So that's the thing. Like, moving around the world, there's different stipulations. You've got different reputations. And that's the thing. Like, you also find some absolute gems. There's a guy from... Is it from Leverkusen? Can't... Mane Kone, the defensive midfielder, the centre midfielder. Oh my God, he's unreal. And I was like, dude, I would love to have him. And then his buyer clause is 67 million. And I was like, that's a little that's a little pricey. Like I said, and we also have Hato and Wrench. So I don't think we need another DM. As much as I would love him, he's like six foot four. 
this is one thing Barco always did for us in United. He scored a lot of goals. I think in this league, he's going to score a ton. But Sosa is so good. Like, he's so good. He's got, like, 18 crossing, which is absolutely wild. But it's nice. You need depth. And having them two, giving them a chance to one play all the time. Apologies for the weird cut. My capture software just crashed. I can't even remember what I was saying. But, yeah, it's nice to go around, like, different teams and, like, different stipulations and like different leagues and stuff because then you find you basically find a ton of wee gems granted yes i could just go on the fm scout and be like oh who's good he's good he's good he's good by him but i like setting up a really really good like scouting system we have it we have like 13 good scouts now i have 14 it's 13 or 14 say 14 for toxic i have 12 scouts out scouting the world for players from like was it like 16 to like 19 and they start at like one and a half star potential and they have a minimum of like three and a half to four star potential um ability so busy we have a ton of scouts just scouting all around the world i actually need to add brazil and stuff to that because i forgot to add brazil and argentina to that but uh, hopefully they can bring us some like absolute banger players like i said my point is i love scouting i just i could just go and look up who's the best players in the world probably i know who a few of the good players are now but I don't know some of the wee hidden gems that are cheap that you can get from around the world. And that's the thing that makes this exciting. Going to like different teams. Yes, look, I expect us to win the league. But I want to build a team with like young players, not spend a ton of money, but also make a shit ton of money. Because let's say, um, Kanate, we're, someone's going to buy him, or Marcus Leonardo, someone's going to buy him. We only paid like 20, 28 million for him, but we're going to get at least double or triple that back for them because some big team's going to come in. And this is what keeps me excited to play Football Manager. Just that, like, oh, I want to get this player. Oh, our reputation's not big enough. So I have to go and, like, try and find someone else. Someone who's good in that position. But he's not just as good as him. And this is what keeps me playing. Just, like, just the game being so different. And, like, that, that that's getting bad. See what I mean about me and points? My point is, this is the reason why I love it. Because if you just buy the same players over and over and over and over again it gets boring because you know what that player's going to develop into you know how good he is you know what he's good at or if you can't buy that player you have to find someone similar to him who's like a wee bit cheaper maybe not just as good but like maybe he's faster and he's more exciting and that's what keeps me playing there has been no replays the only thing that's happened is miss rari has got injured <laughs> So that yeah, that that's 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 fantastic. Thanks for that. Right. Rooney Badgie probably needs to come off as well. Let's bring Carlos Borges on. Let's give people a wee bit of a rest. Hato. Um, let's bring Medic on. Um, who else? Ranch. They bring Ranch off. Yeah, let's bring Mazvirk on and just give everybody a wee bit of a break. Like I said, honestly, there there has been no replays this whole half. That's the first thing that's happened, is him getting injured. I would rather there be no replays and we not get an injury. <laughs> One thing I do kind of want to do with this is if we're going to sell sort of like players that aren't as great, keep trying to sell them, the teams in this league. It's, what is it called? Build a nation. I would like to try and build the Dutch league up to be a wee bit more instead of just like one or two teams being really good, like make it like four or five teams that are really, really good. Like kind of what the German league is doing at the minute. Kanate and his first goal, boys. The war for the first of many. I would like to try and like, perhaps the German league, there was only like Dortmund, and Bayern, now you've got Leverkusen's playing well, Leipzig have got money, they're starting to play well, you know what I mean? You have a couple of our teams, Wolfsburg aren't as good as they used to be. That's one one save I would like to probably like to do is Wolfsburg at some point. But I like that. I, I like the idea of basically like build a nation where like any players that we get rid of that are just okay, sell them to like smaller teams in the Dutch league and like try, or try, if, if we've got amazing youth players, loan them out the teams that are in the same league and basically like build a nation I want to try and take Ajax to the tippity top of like the best you can be as a club team but also make the Dutch league a wee bit better so boys that is us a wee 3-0 Leonardo, Barco and Kanate hopefully Miss Rory's injury is not bad let's go and see what it is hopefully it's not a bad injury because he's one of the ones that actually want to see how well he develops <sighs> It's not terrible, but three to six weeks or three to four weeks is still a wee bit of a pain in the ass because I would like to play him in the Europa League and stuff. But all in all, like I said, a very, very good result. I'm going to go and play the game against Utrecht and then we will play our first match in the round of 16 against Cerverte. Like I said, this should be a team that we should be absolutely clean on the floor with. So the Utrecht game in between, perhaps we won that because, you know, 
were pretty good. <laughs> we had a good game. We had a very, very good game. Marcus and the Order scored a hat trick. Canada got another goal. Vanderson got another goal. Vanderson is currently out, but it's only, I don't think it's for long. I think it's for like four or five days or something. And I was like, right, okay. So one of the reasons why I didn't bring um that we man united right back in is because i forgot i also loaned this guy in because we loaned him in but then we didn't get him until january is why i forgot about him this is martin fernandez this is the wee guy from porto the one that we have the clause in where we can get him for 5.5 million look he has one and a half star potential this is what he's playing at he has five star potential he's very very consistent he's got a good personality he's got 20 determination so he's one I'm probably going to bring in because him and Vanderson can kind of interchange. Like I said, if Vanderson, at some point we may lose him. I don't know. Like I said, I'm always thinking of hypotheticals. And for 5.5 million at 18 years old, I think with nothing really over to lose. Not gonna lie, for the first like nine minutes, nothing's happened. <laughs> this has been our first replay. <laughs> One, I was just kind of, oh, he whipped the ball in. Nobody's going to win that. Dude, I don't know what it is with Marcus Leonardo. He doesn't have good head or jumping. Like I said, we looked. It's only like 11 and fucking 12 or something. He just seems to score so many headers. <laughs> Did that just say that's Marcus Leonardo's 29th goal of the season? Bro, that's absolutely wild. This is one thing. I do want to see how good... Your guy L Adashibu actually gets. I don't know how good he becomes. That's a really good interception. A terrible fucking pass from their centre back, but a good interception. Fucking brilliant finish. And Marcus Leonardo is gonna be very, very good. He's gonna score a lot of goals for us. I think he's probably gonna be one of our buys for the season. Konate is probably he's the one that's got like the huge potential. But Marcus Leonardo is gonna be the one that just keeps scoring the goals. If we were to lose Marcus Leonardo, I'm like I said, I'm always thinking hypotheticals in my head. If we were to lose this person, what would I do? If we were to lose Marcus Leonardo, I would just put Kanate up top and then I would just move Rooney Baji around and just get his another inside forward. Dude, if this was my defense, I'd be raging at them. Like I said, I'm always thinking hypotheticals because we're a small squad or a small team. Small, I would say we're, I actually a mid-level team now if you're thinking of like, like they used to be really good in the Champions League and stuff, but they've kind of dropped down. Like I said, they sold a lot of players, never really replaced them. And if big teams come in, like we, I'm hoping we are able to keep them because this is a squad. Like I don't want to lose Kanate, Marcus Leonardo, um, Hato, French. I'm on the fence about Badashebu. I don't know how good he's gonna be, but like I said, we didn't pay big money or anything for him. And we've, I, I think we've done pretty well in the transfer market. We brought in really, really good players. And I'm excited to see how they all get on. Like I said, I'm hoping because if we win the league and the cup and keep doing well in Champions League and stuff, perhaps even we get into it next year, um, we have the reputation to be able to keep those players. We'll just have to see how we get on. But then all the new gens start coming through and you know some of, some of the new gens can be a little wild. <laughs> Dude, Marcus Leonardo can score from any... Is that his hat trick? It's only 42 minutes. Look... They're wrong. Is this us, me being like, we're the best team ever? Look, this is, we're playing a very, very bad team. We're playing a small Swiss team. But just like the movement, if that was a way better keeper, I don't know if he'd have scored that, but Marcus Leonardo seems to be able to score really, really well with both feet and his head. Could he get 40, maybe 50 goals in his first season if he keeps playing like this? I don't see any reason why, because it said this is on what, 31 or 32? If he's on like 32 goals already, he only needs another 18 in like 16 games to score 50 goals in his first season. <laughs> that man just fucking went to Marcus Leonardo. Lay on the ground, bitch. Is this Marcus Leonardo? Dude, I would have met Marcus Leonardo hit this. He would have been on for four goals. The boys, that is us. We finished 4 0. I'm super, super happy with that. Score four goals. Ding it's a, like I said, it's not against like top tier opposition. But look, playing well is nice. The only thing I kind of worry me a little bit is Kanate had a 6.5. I'm hoping he starts to pick up a little bit. Look, I said, look, I said, I know he's only played five games and he's not been fit because he was away on international duty and stuff. But I want to see him just hit the ground running and just fucking start smashing some goals, get his confidence up. But all in all, boys, today's a good one. Got our first, let, let's be honest, boys. We're into the quarterfinals. This team's not going to put us out. We're into the quarterfinals of the Europa League. 
Travesty and then the next round of the cup, we're into the semis of that. And we're looking really, really good in the league. We've built ourselves a really, really good young team that has a lot of potential to just smash everybody. It's going to take us a couple of seasons because like I said, they're here and I need them like up here to sort of like really, really compete in the Champions League. I think going forward, we're going to need a wee bit more depth at the back like sort of quality and depth because the people we have at center back i'm very very happy with our starting three center backs i'm happy with but when i have to take them off that's where the problems start to kick in a little bit is the quality of the people we bring on is just not fantastic but that'll come a time like i said we've still a lot of money left. i think we still like 23 million left so if anybody tickles my fancy before the end of the season we could put a wee offer in for them and see how we are but all in all boys Pretty good win today. So that is going to do it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to on YouTube. Have yourselves a fantastic day. We're making this team fantastic again.